Hello, 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 hello. coming welcome 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 to self-checkout so glad that you could join us today uh, we are indeed glad to be back uh, on this week and as you come in please as I usually ask if you will please say hello let me know that you're here and we do ask that you would share the, uh, this video as we ask that you would share all of our videos uh, for self-checkout. And of course, self-checkout is where we take an honest look at what's in our hearts, our minds, and our spirits. And I'm really, really glad that you all have decided to watch this broadcast today. Um, we hope that it is enlightening. We hope that it uh, puts something on your mind uh, in the season that we're in and I'm just really really glad to be back to talk to you guys uh, hey uh, prophetess Dana thank you for joining hey mama hey Sharday thank you all for joining hey Jeanette you all are on everybody that's on hello hello I want I need to hear you let me see you say hello speak to me up in this joint <laughs> Uh, yeah, so again, we do ask that you would share the video, give us some likes, give us some hearts, uh, give us some thumbs up, you know, and talk back to me. I really, that's what I really want on self-checkout as I'm talking and giving you information that I have and scriptures and words from the Lord or whatever it may be. I want you to talk back with me. Put it in the comments. Hello, Antoinette. Thank you for joining today. Put it in the comments. Hey, mama. Uh, put it in the comments, talk with us, talk with us. And as you can see, I have again, uh, on what color I got? I got on blue today. My, uh, this shirt, this t-shirt is a, a brand of WTM, Willie Taylor Ministries. I designed this t-shirt myself. And that's our motto is that we want to plant, build, and dominate in the earth. That's what we want to do. And if many of you have t-shirts already, if you have shirts, Take pictures with your shirt on. Send them to me because some of them I don't have. But And I do have, a, I only have a few left. Um, if you would like to order a shirt, you can do so for uh, the shirts. Each shirt's are $20. I only have five left. I have three red ones. I have a small, a large, and the 3X. One small, one large, one 3X in red, and in navy blue, I have two medium shirts. And if you would like to order one of those shirts, you can see me, uh, inbox me today, uh, text, email, whatever, and I will get you your shirt for $20. So that's what we are all about. And a part of planting, building, and dominating. Um, hey, Mia. Hey, Tab. Thank, thank y'all for joining. Thank you. A part of our motto, um, you know, to plant, build, and dominate and what we do here at Self Checkout, again, we take an honest look at what's in our hearts, minds, and spirits. And for some, that's planting. And for some, that's building. And for some others, it may just help you to dominate in where you already are in life. And that's what we want to do. We just want to help people to grow. Amen. We want to help people to learn, to do better, to be better. But in order to do that, we have to be honest with ourselves, We right? We have to take an honest look at what's in us, what's in our hearts, what's in our minds, what's in our spirits. So um, today's episode, 
I want to talk about the power of influence. And you know, um, I, I watch a lot of TV, I see a lot of things um, on social media. And um, I, I guess it's the preacher in me. I always, try, I always try to take something away from what I see, what I hear, uh, and learn from it or get some type of revelation from it. Um, that's just who I am by nature. I can't help it. Um, but since we've been in this season, this rough season where COVID-19 has taken over the world, um, you know, we're, we're quarantined, we're in the house, in our houses, can't go out unless it's for essential things. More and more people, and it's a good thing, more and more people are uh, popping up on social media. And because this is the outlet that we have now, well, those of us who are actually being obedient and following the guidelines that the government has set, no shade, I'm just saying, um, this is our outlet. We can't go to our poor pits at our churches. You know, this is what we have, uh, social media. Hey, Pastor Denzel, thank you for joining. Thank you, all of you guys. Thank you for coming in. Please drop some hearts, drop some likes, drop some comments. Let me know you're here. Share the video. Um, and so everybody's on social media. Everybody's trying, mostly everybody's trying to be encouraging. And we really, really need that nowadays. And so today um, on our episode of Self Checkout, we want to talk about the power of influence. Um, the power of influence. Type that in the comments. Let me know you got it. The power of influence. Um, we've all heard the phrase. We've all heard the phrase. Or somebody told us or we've told somebody, you're a bad influence. <laughs> you are a bad influence. We've all heard that at some point in time. And this is usually said of someone who has had some type of persuasion um, over someone to do or not to do something. They persuade you. Hey, Tanya, thank you for joining. They persuade you or they influence you. Now, the word influence means the action or process of producing effects on the actions, behavior, opinions, etc. of another or of others. Let me say that again. Influence means the action or the process of producing effects on the actions, behavior, and opinions of others. So there are, um, obviously, there are many, many positive influence. Many, we have so many positive influence, too many to name, but we, I mean, we have the, 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 the church, the preachers, the pastors, the fivefold ministry, you know, we, the ministry of helps. We have so many uh, positive influences, even in the government. And regardless as to what anybody says, all of our government officials are not bad people. Um, some of them are good. Some of them are, uh, some of them know God. Some of them are Christian. You know, I was listening to a lady um, on Governor Pritzker's uh, press conference yesterday and she was talking and she was like, you know, I love church too. I love going to church. I love laying on her hands and blah, 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 meeting with the saints. I said, man, this woman, she, she know God for real, right? So she's a government official and she's, I, I don't think that she's a bad person. So everybody's not bad. We do have many positive influences. Our parents uh, have, have been positive influences in our lives. Those that we call friends, they are positive influences. Some of them, some of them are positive influences. All your friends that we call friends haven't been always positive, but uh, many of them are. So some are positive and some are not always so positive. Uh, there are some people that use their influence in deceptive ways. There are some people that use their influence in deceptive ways. Can we agree on that? Some people have the platform. They have the name. They have the title. They have the persuasion. They have the influence. And they use it sometimes for not so good reasons. Hey, Sister Christine down in Texas. Glad to see you. Thank you for joining. Um, 
they are deceitful. Some of them. It's, it, I, 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 we just kind of say it like it is. They are deceitful. They are deceivers. And people, the spirit of deception is real. It's a real thing. The spirit of deception is real. Um, now, the word deception comes obviously from the word deceive. And to deceive means to mislead by a false appearance or statement. It means to be unfaithful to. It also means to falsely persuade or influence others. That's the word deceive. It means to mislead by a false appearance or a false statement. It means to be unfaithful to. It means to falsely persuade or influence others. Uh, so I want to take a look at this. The power of influence. I don't know if you guys are up on uh, the Netflix show, The Tiger King. Has anybody watched that? The Tiger King on Netflix. I watched it. Um, and at first I wasn't really going to watch it. I had turned it on at first and I watched a few minutes of it. I was like, man, no, I ain't going to watch this. It, this ain't about nothing. And then my uh, god brother, uh, Mark Stennis, he texted me the next day asking me if I had watched it. And I said, well, I, tr I tried to check it out, but I, I just didn't, you know, it didn't look like, he was like, man, you need to really watch it. It's good. So I gave it another shot and I started watching. I was like, man, this is interesting. It was funny. It was interesting. And I saw some things in that show, um, which led me to talk about two things. This is one thing that led me to talk about the power of influence today. Uh, the show, The Tiger King, uh, the guy's name was Joe, his stage name, if you will, was Joe Exotic. I believe his real name is Joe Mal Maldonado or something like that. Hey, Pastor uh, Natalie Johnson, thank you so much for joining. Um, so Joe Exotic and those that worked with him, closely with him, they abused their power and their influence to get people to do their bidding. The power of influence. They used their power of influence to get other people to do their bidding. Also, these people that worked for him, they worked for little or nothing. They worked for very little. Uh, I believe it was $120 a week they worked for this man. $120 a week. Six, seven days a week sometime. 12-hour days, if not longer. All they got was a flat $120 a week. I'm not kidding you. Not kidding. Um, he, this guy, he preyed on people who were weak-minded. He preyed on people, people who were dependent and who really had no purpose in life. This, was, this way, he could use them for his operation. So what he did was he went after um, convicts. He went after homeless people. He really got people under him who had nothing to lose. They didn't have anything. So for a lot of people, $120 a week was a lot. If you're homeless, you know what I'm saying? If you have nothing. So, so they followed him and they did whatever he wanted uh, them to do because they had no purpose. He used his power of influence in a deceptive way. The power of influence. Um, and even his arch enemy. If you watch the show, his arch enemy, her name was Carol. Carol Baskin. She was just the same. She was just the same. She, all of her workers that worked with her, they didn't even get paid. They worked for free. They worked for free. This was nothing but uh, pure manipulation and abuse of power. Abuse of influence. So he, he would coach these people and teach them, you know, hit what he wanted them to know. He gave them, watch this, he gave them their purpose in life. Isn't that sad? It's a dangerous thing when another person gives you your purpose. Wow. It's a, I'm going to say that again. It's a dangerous thing when another person gives you your purpose. Whew. 
It's bad. It's dangerous uh, for people not to know their own purpose because watch this. Watch this. And I heard this from someone else and I want to share it with you because if people, if you don't know your own purpose, people will create a purpose for you. And that's dangerous when somebody else creates a purpose for you. You know, you got to seek God to find your own purpose. You have to seek God for yourself to find your own purpose. Because if someone gives, if a person gives you your purpose, you, you, you're kind of like a robot to them. You know what I'm saying? They tell you what to do. They tell you where to go. That's the danger of being an influential person that abuses that power, their power of influence. So, yep, uh, we, 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 and if you agree with me, let me know. Talk to me. Talk to me in the comments. Hey, uh, Sister Denise, good to see you. Thank you for joining. Um, so we have this going on today, in this day and time, unfortunately. People are using their positions, their titles, their stances to influence people to do what they want you to do. And you have to be careful who you listen to, man. You, ha you have to be careful who you listen to nowadays. And, and unfortunately, um, that's right. Stop letting people give, stop letting other people give you your purpose. That's absolutely right. Um, Natalie says, if someone gives, gives you your purpose, you will only serve their purpose. And that's, that's absolutely right. And that's what these people did. They gave people their purpose. And then they use them for their own purpose. The power of influence. The power of influence. These were mighty people in, in that uh, area where they were doing what they were doing. You got to watch the show, The Tiger King, to really understand what I'm talking about on this. Uh, so, you know, in this day and time, everybody is not... Let me say it this way. Everybody they, that says... Their team God is not team God. So with, with us having this platform, you have to even be careful who you let preach to you, even on social media. Come on, somebody. Come on. You have to be careful with that because people will use their influence for deceitful purposes. Um, let me give you some scripture. First John chapter four, verse number one in the Message Bible, it says, My dear friends, don't believe everything you hear. Carefully weigh and examine what people tell you. Not everyone who talks about God comes from God. Then he says, there are a lot of lying preachers on, lo on the loose in the world. There are a lot of lying preachers loose in the world. Let me read that again. First John chapter four, verse one. I know I'm going to go over 30 minutes today. I'm sorry. It might be about 40. First uh, John chapter, chapter four, verse one in the message Bible says, my dear friends, don't believe everything you hear. Carefully weigh and examine what people tell you. Not everyone who talks about God comes from God. There are a lot of lying preachers loose in the world. Isn't that sad? But isn't it also true? There are a lot of people who, who, are, who say they go by the name of God. And because when, when someone is a, a babe in Christ or they are weak-minded, easy to manipulate, listen, we have to be careful what we say because there are people who will hang on every word that you say and believe everything that comes out of your mouth. And they will do what you want them to do. They will do what you ask them to do. But if it's abuse of your influence, you're going to have to answer to God for that, man. You're going to have to answer to God. Because right now, we need to be lifting people up. We need to be encouraging people. And we have people that are using this platform. And they are abusing their power. They are abusing their titles. They are abusing their influence. That scripture says that uh, everyone who talks about God does not come from God. They just know that if I put God's name on it, folks will believe it. 
But no, 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 no. The Bible says that we ought to try the spirit by the spirit to see if they be from God. So you have to be careful nowadays. In this day and age, discernment is key. Discernment. Use your discernment. Am I talking right so far? Use your discernment. Because people will, if you're easily to be manipulated, and see, this is another thing. This is why if you do go to church, if you have a church and a pastor, follow your leaders. Follow your leaders. Listen to what your pastors say. Uh, they, God gives them instruction. Um, you need to follow your pastors. If you believe in them, if you trust them, you need to follow them. If you don't trust them, you need to go somewhere else that where you trust the leader. Because God is shifting us in this season. It's a major shift going on right now. And you need to hear, you need to be able to hear God. If you can't hear him for yourself, you should be able to. But if you can't, that's what you have pastors for. Follow them. Listen to them. Because, check this out. We'll bypass some of us, some people will bypass who they call their pastor and they'll listen to a bigger name, if you will. Um, I ain't going to call no names, but y'all know some of the big names out there. They'll listen to them, but won't listen to their own pastors. And these other people, not all of them, but some of them are abusing the power of influence that they have in their platform just because their name is what their name is. Now, I'm going to say this, and some of you all, a lot of you all talk with me on this post I shared a few days ago where I was uh, appalled at the fact that someone, some popular preacher had a prayer kit that they were offering, which included a water bottle and a t-shirt and a prayer shawl or whatever else it was, and they were selling it. For $133. Lord have mercy. A prayer kit. What is a prayer kit? But that's what it was called. And they were, that they were selling it for $133. And here's my problem with that. Number one, folks ain't got no jobs nowadays. If you, in this pandemic, if you are still able to work, um, God bless you. That That's a blessing in itself. If you are one of the essential workers that have to go out, thank you for what you do. Thank you for your service. But all of us are not able to, to work. All of us, I'm one of them. I have not been working since March 4th. I have not had an income since March 4th. But God has kept me. God has sustained me. I want for nothing. And I thank him for that. But uh, yeah, this person was is selling a prayer kit for $133. And I said, that's, that's wrong because people are using their influence to get other people to give them money because that's what it's all about. It's about money to give them money to help sustain their lifestyle. When we are in this pandemic together, and we need to make sure our houses are maintained. Hey, Herschel, thank you for joining. We need to, my high school friend, we need to make sure our houses are straight, right? Um, now, I'm not telling you, I'm not saying don't give. I'm not saying that. No, no, no. Let me be clear. What I am saying is that if you are a part of a church, give to your church. Give to your pastors. If you, um, if you are a part of a church, you need to give to them. If, if you know people that are in situations because of what's going on, you need to, you, well, no, you don't need to, but if you feel led to give them a, a few dollars, do that. Um, God will bless you for that. I believe it with all my heart. Um, so we have to, but we just have to be careful not to follow and listen to everybody that's talking about give me, give me, give me, because all of them don't have pure motives. 
right? The power of influence. They are using their influence for their own personal gain with no kind of, not even cognizant of what you may need. Or what, because we're again, we're all in this together. We're all in this together, and it's it's a bad thing that's happening. But we need to save, if we can, if we have anything, for our own houses, and we have to do what's right by our local churches. We have to follow our leaders. We we still have to tithe. If you have an income, you still need to give an offering. You still need to give something to your own pastors. If you can do it, do it. That's right, and God will honor that. But all these other folks that's talking about send me $150, $133, and I'm going to send you a water bottle. and all, Get out of here with that. People are using their influence for bad. And shame on them. And God's going to judge them for using his name to gain money. The Bible call I said I was going to look that scripture up. The Bible calls them greedy dogs. It's in the book of Isaiah. I wish somebody could look that up for me real quick and put that scripture in the comments. Uh, Google it. In Isaiah, where he calls these people greedy dogs. That's in the King James Version. He used those words. That's right, Eb. Shame on them. Shame on them. So you have to be, we have to be clear. We have to use discernment during this time uh, when it comes to our resources, our money. Listen, in Exodus, uh, Moses had told the people to give and they started bringing money. They started bringing their things and bringing what they had. They were giving, giving, giving until he looked and he said, come on, Ebony, thank you. Isaiah 56 and 11. Type that what it says in the comments for me. Uh, they were bringing so much until he said, wait, stop, stop, stop. You all have done great. He said, you've brought more than enough. Stop bringing gifts. Stop bringing these offerings. Save the rest for your house. Come on. When you take care of the man of God, the woman of God, your pastors, your church, God will take care of you. And you are not under obligation to give to anybody else. Unless the Holy Spirit tells you to do so. Okay? Unless the Spirit tells you to do so. Um, thank, I'm, I'm grateful for people who have seen my situation and said, you know what, let me sow into you. It's been a couple of people. And I'm grateful for that. Because people don't have to do anything for us. But those of us who have a platform, those who have influence... You cannot abuse the power of your influence. You can't do it. I want to give you some more scriptures too. Um, I, I'm going to skip around in 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. Uh, Paul is talking to the church at Corinth. Watch this. Listen to this carefully, y'all. He says, but I fear in chapter in verse 3, 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3. He says, but I fear that somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted just as Eve was deceived by the cutting ways of the serpent. Watch this. You happily put up with whatever anyone tells you, even if they preach a different Jesus than the one we preach or a different kind of spirit than the one you received or a different kind of gospel than the one you believed. Lord have mercy. Paul uh, is warning the church at Corinth. He says in verse 5, But I don't consider myself inferior in any way to these, watch this, to these super apostles. Y'all, I love the message, right? But y'all got to read that. Uh, he said, I don't consider myself inferior in any way to these super apostles who teach such things. I may be unskilled as a speaker, but I'm not lacking in knowledge. Paul, I think Paul had a bit of a smart mouth. <laughs> he said, I may be unskilled as a speaker, but I'm not lacking knowledge. We have made this clear to you in every way possible. In verse number eight, look, watch what he says. He says, I robbed other churches by accepting their contributions so I could serve you at no cost. The apostle Paul said, yeah, when people uh, uh, sit, ask for me to uh, accept an engagement, okay, he said, I took the offer, but when I come to you, I don't get no offering. I don't want no offering. 
and when I, when I was with you and didn't have enough to live on, watch this, I did not become a financial burden to anyone. I have never been a burden to you and I never will. People of God, people of God, listen, during this time, many people have very little and they're, they're struggling, some making it week to week. You cannot, I just don't believe it's God's will. You cannot be a financial burden to people because they're burdened already. Why would you put heavier burdens on them when they're already burdened? My pastors are on here. Y'all know I get excited when I see my leaders on here. Apostles Kurt and Linda Stennis, love you. Yep. So Paul said, I won't be, a, I, he said, I haven't been a financial burden to you and I won't be because Paul understood the position of the number one of the church that he was talking to and he understood his own position, right? He says, I'll take an offer from this church, but I won't take nothing from you because I know where you are. He says, I don't want to be a financial burden to you. Now watch this. I'm going to go back to something I said before, and the Bible is right. That means somebody got to be wrong. I don't care what you say. I don't care what anybody says. If you have income still, you owe God your tithe. That's not negotiable. You owe him that. You can't say, well, I need to. No, 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 no. You have to do that for a covering for yourself, people. Come on. He says, if you do this, then I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. Come on, Malachi chapter 3. We owe God the tithe, but we are not to be a burden to anyone financially. No, pay God your tithe. Give your church an offering. Give your pastors an offering. That's all you're really obligated to do. Unless Holy Spirit says, you know what? Be a blessing to somebody. And he'll do that in, in this hour. Yes, he will. He will do that to check our integrity, to check our character. Come on. To check our obedience. Last week, we talked about uh, the blessings of obedience. He wants to see if during this time, do we still have what we say we have? Come on. So, yeah, if he says do it, do it by all means. But don't you let nobody trick you with their words and get you to give something that God never ordained. A prayer kit for $133. I wish I would. I got pastors. I got a church. I know people who need. So why would I give you $133 and you already living in a, a million dollar mansion? You don't need my $133. But my church does. My pastor does. Somebody that I know who, who doesn't work anymore because of this pandemic, they could use it. Come on. We could bless somebody that we know is going through a rough time. I'm not sending you nothing. I don't care what your name is. I'm not sending you a dime. Because there are people in my life that could use financial help. Come on. I don't care if it's $20. I had a woman of God uh, message me yesterday. She said, um, uh, me and my husband talk and we love to sow. And she said, Holy Spirit told me to be a blessing to you. And she said, it's not much, but I want to send you something because I know your position. And she sent me $20 and I was just as happy as if that 20 was $2,000. Yes, I was. Because, wait, so let me slow down. B, uh, hey, Sister B, she said, you better know God's voice for yourself. You better know it. That's right. You have to know God's voice for yourself because if you don't, people will manipulate you. They'll use the power of influence in a deceptive way. I want to finish reading this. Paul also goes on to say in verse 12, he said, but I will continue doing what I've always done. This will undercut those who are looking for an opportunity to boast that their work is just like ours. These people are false apostles. They are deceitful workers who disguise themselves as apostles of Christ. 
But I'm not surprised, Paul says. Even Satan himself disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is, so it is no wonder that his servants, servants of Satan, also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. But watch this. He says, in the end, they will get the punishment their wicked deeds deserve. Yep. So Paul is instructing the church of Corinth. And he's not telling them not to give. I'm not telling you not to give. But what I am saying, hear me clearly. And I repeat myself. If you have pastors, if you have a church, so to your pastors, so unto your church, if you have an income during this time. Um, it's, it's right to do. And God will bless you. And I promise you, he won't let you lack. Let me tell you why I haven't gone without anything so I again, I haven't been working for I haven't had any income, zero income for a month and a week. And let me tell you why I still eat every day, because I have seed in the ground. I've been sowing for years. I've been sowing and giving for years. And it's, it's coming up now. As a harvest for me, because I've, I've sown. I've sown. So therefore, I'm able to eat every day because I had seed in the ground from years ago. God won't let me go hungry. Come on, somebody. God won't let me be homeless. I haven't paid no rent. God won't let me be homeless, though, because I had seed in the ground. I trusted him. When I had nothing, I trusted him. I have nothing now, and I still trust him. Because it, it's not going to be like this forever. Come on. When we come out of this thing, Lord have mercy. When we come out of this, do you hear what I'm saying? Keep trusting God with what you have. Keep trusting God. Uh, Ebony says we are to give biblically, not emotionally. Show sure up because people will use that. See, preachers, we have the power of influence. We have the power of persuasion. And we know how to talk. We know what to say to get people emotional. And then that will cause them to give. These things ought not be. These things ought not be. You got to be smart with your money right now because we don't know what's going to happen. We do know God's going to take care of us, but we have to be smart with it. Oh, I've gone over my time. It's, 11, it's 1238. I've gone over my time. I'm getting ready to cut off. Uh, let me close this. So um, we have to be smart. We have to be uh, smart with our resources. And we have to, um, I, I love what Ebony just said. If we're going to give, we have to give biblically, not emotionally. If there are people in your life that are a blessing to you, if you have it, be a blessing to them. Ministry leaders, pastors, entrepreneurs. Be a blessing to them if you can. If you can't, don't worry about it. God don't hold that against you. But if you can, do so. If you got a few extra dollars and you have a pastor, give to your pastor. Don't you give to another church. Don't you give to another ministry. Don't you give to another preacher or prophet before you give to your own pastor. I rebuke that now. Do not do it. We are to take care of our own house first before we go outside. The old saying says, charity begins at home and then spreads abroad. So I wanted to talk about the power of influence today. We self-check out. We take an honest look at what's in our hearts, our minds, and our spirits. And the power of influence, we have it. And I beg of you, use it for good. Use it so that God can get the glory, not so that you can live, because that's not right. When we take money from people who really have no money so we can live good. God is, God is not calling for that, and God is not in that. I can't stress enough. Give to your pastors. Give to your church. Give to people that you know are in need. If you're going to give, give that way. Don't give... I, well, I'm not saying don't give. If God doesn't tell you to give, 
to others don't. Give biblically, not emotionally. So today, I thank you guys for joining us today. The power of influence, the power of influence. Our scriptures were 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, the Message Bible version, and uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. Take a look at it when you get a chance. Again, I have the Plant, Build, and Dominate t-shirts. If you would like one, they are only $20. I will send it to you. Uh, you can uh, PayPal or Cash App for your t-shirt. If you already have a t-shirt, take a picture in it, send it to me. I would like to post it on social media. Thank you so much for taking the time to come into my self-checkout line where we talked about the power of influence. We all have that in our carts and it should stay there. The influence should stay in our carts, but we have to use it for the glory of God and not for personal gain. I, if I take nothing else away from this, it's nothing that I've even said. It's something that Ebony said that I'm going to post that, uh, give biblically, not emotionally. I thank you all for joining me today. Um, if you would like for me to talk about anything on self-checkout, all you have to do is let me know. If you have a topic that you would like discussed, say the word. I'll, I'll talk about it. So send me an email, send me a text, in, inbox me, write it on my wall. But we'll talk about it on self-checkout. Thank you for tuning in today. We'll see you next Thursday. It's been real. I'm signing off now. God bless.